Hi, I'm Jeffrey Stuffings from Jester King Brewery, and I'm here to give you your craft beer and brewing tip of the week. So when it comes to yeast, this is one of the major defining characteristics of a farmhouse beer. And keep in mind that farmhouse brewing does cover a broad swath of time going back centuries, really going back to arguably the birth of beer somewhere around you know, 20 to 10,000 years ago, uh, all the way up until you know, today. And that time period tracks both uh, wild fermentation, which is all really anyone knew. There was no pure cultures until you know, somewhere in the, the 19th century. Uh, up until today in which magic of, um, I shouldn't say magic, but just the wonder of modern brewing, you can have a pure culture delivered, you know, fresh to your brewery or home brewery overnight. It's, it's amazing you know, the rise of pure culture fermentation and what it's done for the overall kind of consistency, predictability, and arguably quality of, of beer, particularly farmhouse ales like, you know, in going to visit, you know, Brasserie you know, DuPont in, in, in Belgium, you know, it's, it's a mixed culture from what, you know, they're a little tight-lipped, so it's hard to, to, to know, but from what I've been able to ascertain, you know, they started off with a mixed culture, but a mixed culture of Saccharomyces cerevisiae, so we're talking really pure culture fermentation. I mean, they're kind of the most famous brand when it comes to farmhouse ales, and they're working with a pure culture and have been for a long time. So don't at all assume that farmhouse means wild, farmhouse means funky or tart. That's not, that's not true, but it certainly can mean that as well. All of these beers, again, would have been wild. It just really bit of, would have been when you drank them. Imagine brewing a farmhouse ale 200 years ago. That culture, which you maybe borrowed from a neighbor brewery or maybe harvested from a previous batch of beer, however you came across it, it would have been teeming with wild yeast and bacteria because there was no modern sanitation practice in brewing. So how would you have made that beer present relatively like fresh and drinkable for the practical purpose in which you were making it? It would have been through primary fermentation and then serving that beer while it's relatively young and you know, adding a fairly large dose of hops to kind of balance out some of that bacterial acidity and some of that wild yeast character. Uh, some of that kind of like funky Brett character or just, I mean, there's a million descriptors to kind of describe like the funk that you get from wild mixed culture fermentation. So, you know, going to uh, the uh, Farmhouse Ales book again, uh, the Markowski, the, uh, the forward in that talks about, uh, by Avonda Bates, talks about, he mentions the phrase to paraphrase, like a certain like little kind of rustic character from the fermentation. So I would argue that, you know, if nothing else, uh, this is it's, it's not going out of limb. Let's just say it's fun. It's fun to experiment with a mixed culture of wild yeast and bacteria in farmhouse ales. That's primarily what we do here at Jester King. Every now and then we'll do experiment with a farmhouse ale that's 100% a pure culture, but you know, 99% by volume of what we brewed over the last decade here has been mixed culture fermentation. So that's what I'm gonna dive into a little bit more. Mixed culture fermentation is pretty simple if you want to make it that way. I mean, you can get complex and um, you know, have you know, kind of custom cultures created in a lab with like certain measured parts of different types of yeast or bacteria. That's certainly cool. There's uh, a lot of uh, labs that uh, cater to home brewers. For us, um, it was a little less technical. We just took a couple strains of pure culture yeast, the one purported to be from Thierrier, uh, the uh, 3711 French Saison, and then the one that's purported to be from DuPont, the uh, White Labs, uh, I believe it's 565, the um, just Belgian Saison uh, yeast, and used that as our base. And then from there, just started adding a lot of random stuff to it. We had been experimenting with spontaneous fermentation in our very early days, and we took some of the dregs from our spontaneous fermentations, added that to the mix along with some other barrel dregs. Our head brewer at the time, Garrett Crowell, the biggest phantom uh, nerd that I know, and so he threw some like phantom bottle dregs in there. I think I might have added some like Jolly Pumpkin bottle dregs, and so you know, adding bottle dregs is something that's kind of fun. Like, here's an easy way to go about like mixed culture farmhouse fermentation. Just get a vial or a smack pack of whatever yeast, Saison yeast that you think sounds good, and then pitch it simultaneously with that 
and maybe the dregs from, you know, it doesn't have to be our beer, but really any wild beer, add, you know, take some of the, just take the last like two ounces of beer in the bottle, swirl it around, pitch that in there with the smack pack. You've got mixed culture fermentation going uh, just that, that easily. And then what's kind of fun, um, and we've done a lot of this over the years as we've created our mixed culture, is harvesting wild yeast from what's around you on the land. Various wildflowers and you know, herbs and uh, berries, just doing yeast starters, because you know the natural world is just teeming with microscopic life. If you want to get a wild yeast starter going with native yeast and bacteria, just go you know, pick some flower petals or maybe you have a, some type of fruit tree in your yard or, or in your neighborhood or wherever, just go on a you know, urban foraging run and grab something that's on your block and make that into a yeast starter. And for more on brewing rustic farmhouse and table beers, please click on the link below.